Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am the Carnivore Curmudgeon and I am a real carnivore, but I am not a real curmudgeon mostly. Most of us who eat a carnivore diet are very satisfied with beef and eggs and salt and water. But do you ever get tired of just making fried eggs? If you've been carnivore for a while, your answer is probably no. If you're exploring it, your answer might be, well, what more is there? And there's a lot of different ways to make eggs, and we know some of them, but I want to share with you five different ways to zhuzh up your egg game. In fact, I was going to call this video zhuzh up your egg game, and I couldn't figure out how to spell zhuzh. So here we are, and I thought that you'd appreciate these five different ways that will up your egg game during your carnivore journey. And first up, silky scrambled eggs. They're silky, they're creamy. Don't bail on me yet. This is not a normal scrambled egg. There's a little bit of a hack here because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two whole eggs and for every two whole eggs that you want to make, we're gonna add just the yolk of a third egg. So one extra yolk for every two full eggs that we're gonna scramble. That's the first part of two key aspects to these silky eggs. Now take your handy dandy whisk and do as you normally would with scrambled eggs until they're all in cooperatoire. Then turn your stove top up to medium to medium high and add, here's the second part, add more butter than you would normally add. About two tablespoons for these eggs that I'm showing here. Once the butter is nice and melty, Pour those eggs in, again, uh, between medium and medium high. You don't want to cook them too hot too fast, but you don't want to let them simmer too long either. And give them a little stirry stir. I like to take them and just keep moving the outside towards the middle. And then when I see that they're almost set, I start flipping them around. I don't like them too squishy but I don't want them rubbery either. And I turn off the heat and I always get something buttery, creamy, and delicious. Now, these go great with any kind of breakfast meat or any kind of steak if you like, but they seem to go really good with sausage. Number two on our egg zhuzh is going to be the younger, more immature brother of the hard-boiled egg, the delicious soft-boiled egg. Now, I like to get my water already boiling and take cold eggs, although I will use room temperature eggs sometime, drop them in with a slotted spoon, and then set my timer to seven minutes. Six minutes for room temperature eggs. Then I take them to the sink and I dump out the boiling water and start running as cold water out of the tap as I can. And then I give them a little bit of water in the pan, just a, a very gentle flip in the pan to crack the shell. The key is to get that cold water under the membrane so that it helps to separate the shell. And I know it's always a crap shoot with soft oil eggs. You never know what you're going to get. In fact, of these two, the second one, part of the egg white disintegrated. Still, even if you can salvage part of it, when it's jammy on the inside and the egg white is set on the outside, they're just fantastic. I like mine on top of the ground beef, especially for some reason. Now, number three is one of my favorites, egg rounds. Think of the sort of egg that you get in an egg muffin from uh, that uh, particular restaurant. I take some bacon fat, Put it in the pan. Then I rub my finger around with the fat on the inside of the silicone mold. I'll leave a link below where I bought these. I just love these things. And once I've got all four of them greased up nice, it's time to drop some eggs in. Now I keep the temperature pretty high to start this, between medium and high, to get them started uh, until the eggs start to set on the bottom and around the edges. And your stovetop and your cookware together are likely going to be different than mine, so I really don't have a specific time for this. I just keep my eye on it. And then when I see 
it's where I want it, then I'm ready for the next step to finish them off. And that is to take about a quarter cup of water, which I overdid a little bit in this pan, but about a quarter cup, you can always add more if they're not done when that water is not cooked off. Then cover them up and let them steam bake at the top. I do turn the temperature uh, down just a little bit uh, during this part to keep it from overcooking. Then take those silicone molds off and I use a slotted spatula to let some of that water drain off. I put them on a cold plate to help keep them from overcooking because they're going to continue to cook. And uh, once they're done, I just, I, like I said, I love these things. I take them to work, I reheat them, and uh, they're very versatile. With some sausage and cheese on top of a, a nice chaffle, they make a great breakfast sandwich. I like to take them down to my friend Mac on Donald Street and enjoy them together. Or I might take them to work and put them on top of some ground beef with some butter. And that brings us to number four, shirred eggs, which is French for baked eggs. First, start your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna need four eggs, four ramekins, unless you want to double these eggs up and put them in a larger ramekin. Gonna need a little bit of butter, some grated Parmesan, and some heavy whipping cream. Start by grabbing your butt your butt, uh, grabbing your butter, and uh, give it a good turn around that ramekin and grease it off the sides and the bottom both. Once you've got all four of your ramekins done, it's time to take that heavy whipping cream and believe it or not, just one teaspoon per ramekin. Now, if you do double up your eggs in a larger ramekin, it's still one teaspoon for every egg that you put in the ramekin itself and give that a little stir around to coat the bottom. And it's time to crack some eggs. One whole egg in each ramekin on top of that heavy whipping cream. And if you can, try to coax the yolk to the middle, but it's not really all that important. And we're gonna take a teaspoon of grated parm and sprinkle it over the top of each egg. And for two of these eggs, I'm actually going to take some uh, dried chives and sprinkle it on top. Certainly not necessary, uh, but it can be tasty if you like chives. And now that our oven is uh, up to temperature, as I said, 375 Fahrenheit, I'm gonna put these ramekins on a baking sheet and we're gonna pop them in the oven. And just like any other oven or stove, yours is likely to differ from mine, but I'm going to give mine a start at 14 minutes, and then I'm gonna check them, to see where they're at. Then we wait to nom, 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 nom. After 14 minutes, I'm gonna check them and give them a little jiggle and you can see that mine are still a little jiggly on the uh, egg whites, and I was not satisfied with that, so I put them in for three more minutes. But when they were done, they were set, they were creamy, they were delicious, and you pair it with any kind of breakfast sausage, and they make a delightful egg. And while the oven's already on, why not make some cloud eggs? These can make a great treat. We're just gonna turn that oven on to 400 and 50 degrees. Mine was still warm from making the baked eggs, the shirred eggs. And we're going to separate three egg whites from their yolks, or at least we're going to try. I had quite a time today getting yolks and egg whites separated, but um, you know, nothing ever goes to waste on a cardboard diet. Anything I broke that I didn't like, it just goes into a bowl to be scrambled up later. And we're going to take our egg whites and we are going to beat them mercilessly. You can do it by hand, but a little uh, blender, electric blender, sure makes quick work of it. 
altogether, this only took me about three minutes to get down to those stiff peaks. Essentially, what you want to do is make sure that the egg whites are stiff enough that if you uh, take the bowl and turn it upside down, uh, the eggs whites will not pour out. This is essentially making a meringue. When I was growing up, I hated lemon meringue pie. So for 25 years, everybody said, don't make lemon things for Brad. He hates lemons. I didn't hate lemons. I just didn't like the consistency of baked meringue. But I didn't know you could do what we're about to do, which is take a cookie sheet with some parchment paper and then take that whipped egg whites, the meringue, if you will, and stir in Gruyere cheese, a quarter cup. If I had known that when I was a kid, I would have been fine with meringue, and I wouldn't have missed out on all those lemony, delicious treats. Okay, back to our cloud eggs. I'm gonna take that uh, egg, egg whites and we're going to split it up into three parts so that we can make three approximately the same size beds for the egg yolks that we're going to get back out. And you just make a little cloud. Shape it however you want. Just make sure you leave enough room in the middle for a little deep well in the uh, egg whites to place the yolks. But before we do that, we have to take these egg whites and we have to put them in the oven to bake by themselves for three minutes. It doesn't take long at all. And once they're done, it's time to put the egg yolks back in the middle of their egg. Now, mine got a little bit sticky here, and I think it's because I did not have any kind of food lube, like some butter in the bottom of that, um, that little dish there. And so there went another egg yolk. But no worries, I even broke the third one. I just grabbed another egg yolk put the egg whites in the other failures with the bowl so that I can scramble them up later. And then put the cloud eggs with their yolk in them back in the oven for another three minutes. And that's all it takes. And once they come out of the oven, just take a spatula and dish them up. Then pair them up with whatever food you want to eat with them but most importantly, eat them up. Yeah, that's not your grandma's meringue. Hey, I hope one or more of these five different ways to cook eggs helps you to get out of an egg rut or just up your egg game or maybe give you a little bit of variety. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.